With a cast of talented voices spanning North America, once again, you're listening to Project Audio. Larry Groby with the Generic Radio Workshop. You know, the situation comedy, or sitcom for short, is having a bit of a moment thanks to shows like WandaVision. And well it should, because it's an enduring format that has given us so many classic shows. Why, television alone has given us decades of laughs and entertainment. And the very earliest television sitcoms were actually just video versions of radio shows. Like these. And that includes the original sitcom, Amos and Andy. See, it was radio that invented the genre, giving us regular characters and the funny situations they got into. The particular sitcom we'll visit today is The Life of Riley, which starred William Bendix. Now, Bendix was a versatile actor. In the movies, he could play Babe Ruth or an evil gangster, but he also had this everyman quality. Well-meaning, warm-hearted, but better with brawn than with brains. And that was never better illustrated than his 14-year stint as Chester A. Riley. The Life of Riley premiered in 1944 on the radio and ran until 1951, and then jumped to television until 1958. And then decades more in syndication, an endless number of situations, an endless amount of comedy. So let's tune in to the life of Riley. Internationally famous Paps Blue Ribbon, the finest beer served anywhere, proudly presents The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. Smoother, smoother, smoother flavors, zest and sparkle, million flavors, taste that smoother, smoother flavors, Paps Blue Ribbon beer. What do you have, Paps Blue Ribbon? And now, the life of Riley. Being a father in this hectic modern world and coping with the problems of teenage youth is a bewildering task for even the most intelligent of fathers. So you can imagine the trouble a man of Chester A. Riley's mentality goes through. Oh. Hiya, Dumplin'. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to put in some overtime. Boy, supper's ready. Okay, let's eat. Oh, Riley, I'm so glad you're home. Oh, what's up? It's Junior. That son of yours is just impossible. He's been acting like a lunatic. Uh Uh-huh. When he starts acting like a lunatic, he's my son, huh? And so, what's he done now? Well, he made a date with Linda Walker across the street to take her to a dance tonight. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's time he had his first real date. He, he, I know, After but all, he... he'll soon be 14, and when a boy gets to be his age, he starts to... Well, he feels he... He begins to... Uh, <sighs> I could explain this much better if it was a bee and a bird. <laughs> Would you listen to me a minute? I want him to go on this date, but he won't go. He wants to call the whole thing off at the last minute. Why, don't he like her? Oh, he's crazy about her. He's just scared. He's scared of girls. <laughs> the kid's no fool. Stop. Stop being so smart. It's no laughing matter. He's just petrified. And if you just try and talk to him, he gets hysterical. Oh, and Mrs. Walker's been phoning every five minutes. Now Linda's all dressed up and waiting for him to call for her. Oh, Riley, do something. Now don't get excited. I'll have a talk with him. I know how to handle boys. 
Junior! Ah, oh, there you are. Uh, now what's this I hear about this dance? I'm not going. Well, why not? I don't want to talk about it. Now look here, it's silly to be scared of girls. Believe me, girls are just like boys. Only they're, well, they're girls. <laughs> Nothing to be scared of. Well, I'm not scared. I just don't feel like going. Yeah, because you're scared. But you got not, no reason to be. It's childish. When I took your mother out for our first date, was I scared of her? Of course not. Now, yes, but then, no. <laughs> I'm not going, that's all. Well, why are you so shy? You got nothing to be shy about, Junior. After all, you got my looks and my... Well, uh, <clears throat> let me put it another way. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not now, going. Now, now, take it easy, Junior. You don't have to get hysterical. Let's talk this over calm without shouting. I don't want to go. You will, too, go. No, I'm still your father, I and I say you go, and you I do it. I won't go, and you can't make me go. I'll make you go, Junior. Uh... <laughs> Why, for heaven's sake, Riley. Oh, that son of yours is driving me crazy. Well, shouting isn't going to help. Now, let's talk this over quietly. Yeah, you talk. I'm through. I wash my hands of him. Oh, Riley, he's just got to go to that dance with Linda. Well, he won't. So, let him take the consequences. He'll grow up, he'll be 40 years old, and he won't know the first thing about women. His kids will laugh at him. <laughs> I'm, I'm through. I'm through. You can't reason with him. Oh, now, Junior, dear, I know how you feel, but it, it's perfectly natural. Everybody's scared on their first big date. Pop wasn't. He wasn't? That's what he says. I guess something's wrong with me. I, I feel awful. Now, that's ridiculous. You're a perfectly normal boy. And just let me tell you about the first date I had with your father. He worked in my father's hardware store back in Brooklyn. I used to help out there part-time, but he hardly ever spoke to me. He was living with his mother then, and oh, I remember one time. Do you want some more coffee, Chester? Oh, no, thanks, Mom. I'll be late for work. Old man Barker will skin me alive. I'll see you tonight. I'll be home early, Mom. You're always home early, Chester. A boy your age ought to go out more. Well, I always go out after supper. Uh, you're always in bed by nine. You ought to be going out with girls. Well, gee whiz, Mom. <laughs> Give me time. I'm only 21. Isn't there, isn't there some girl you like? Well, yeah. Uh, that Peggy Barker. Your boss's daughter? Yeah. <laughs> I see her around the store sometimes. Gee, she's so pretty. Every time I look at her, I get sort of a, an empty feeling inside of me. Oh, son, you're in love. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. As soon as I eat, it goes away. <laughs> well, why don't you ask her for a date? Oh, I, I couldn't do that. Gee, I, I hardly ever spoke to her. Why not, for mercy's sake? You see her every day. Well, I don't know. I, I just get scared. I, I think of lots of clever things to say to her, but every time I open up my mouth, all that comes out is... Gong. Now that's silly. There is nothing to be scared of. Just speak right up. You ask her for a date today. I don't know. Even if she said yes... Where would I get the dough? I, I, if only I got a raise. You won't get one unless you ask for it. And you're afraid to open your mouth. After all, you're not a kid any longer. You've got to assert yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're right, Ma. I'll ask her old man Parker for a raise today. That's my boy. And then you ask Peggy to go out with you. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'll see. Oh, what's the matter with you? Don't you want to get married someday and have a home and babies? Well, sure I do. Well, you'll never do it unless you go out with girls. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I wish there was an easier way. Oh, good morning. 
morning, Chester. Oh, Miss Barker. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, well, I... I, uh, well, it was nice talking to you. I'll see you later. Oh, wait a minute, Chester. You don't run off like that. Oh, well, I, I gotta get to work. I got work to do. You don't like me, do you? Like? Uh, but I do. Honest. Well, you never want to talk to me. You're always rushing off somewhere. Well, I, I said good morning. Is that all you've got to say to me? Oh, no. There's lots of things I'd like to say to you. Like what? Well, like... Uh... <laughs> No, I don't think you really like me after all. But I do. Oh, don't go away. Peggy? Yes, Chester? Well, I, I was thinking maybe you and me, that is, uh, if you'd like to, we might, the, the, the two of us some night, if you're not too busy, I was hoping you might like to, to of course, if you're tied up, I understand, no hard feelings some other time. Chester, are you asking me for a date? No. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, uh, maybe. Uh, first, I, I gotta see a father. Excuse me. Come in, Mister Barker, sir. Uh, can I see you a minute? Make it snappy, Riley. There's a store to look after. Well, sir, it's this way. I, uh, <clears throat> I have been working for you for over a year now, and I, I was thinking, uh, that is, uh, if you could see your way clear, maybe, maybe you might, uh, just, just a small, uh, not that I'm really worth, uh, I, I know times are tough. It, business has fallen off, and taxes, and overhead, and I, I see your point. No hard feelings. Some other time. <laughs> just a minute, Riley. Are you asking me for a raise? Oh, no. But <clears throat> as long as you brought the subject up, I, I thought maybe... Uh, well, uh, times are tough. But I'll give you $3 more a week. That'll make it 18 You're really not worth that much. Yeah, but I'm getting 18 now. You are? Yeah. Well, that ought to be enough money for a young man without responsibilities. It would be different if you were a married man. Well, I would like to get married. No. Oh, have you got a girl? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, I can't afford to take her out much unless I get a raise, though. Are you planning to marry her? Yeah, if she'll have me. Uh, if I ever get enough money saved up. Oh, Riley, don't put off marriage on that account. Move in with your in-laws for the first year. <laughs> Gee, I, I never thought of that. Thanks, boss. All right, Riley. I'll raise you to 25. 25? Oh, boy. Oh, gee. Oh, thanks, Mr. Parker. Thanks, boss. Yeah, bring your girl around someday. I'd like to meet her. Oh, you know her. Well, who is she? Your daughter. What? <laughs> You've got your nerve. You have the gall to expect a girl like my Peggy to marry a miserable... Eighteen dollar a week clerk? Twenty-five. You, you just gave me a raise, remember? Hey, gee, you're not going to go back on your word, are you, boss? All right, okay, all right. The raise stands. You get twenty-five. Oh, thanks. And now you're fired. Fired? I'll take eighteen. Get out. Seventeen? You're fired. What a revolting development this is. <laughs> You have just heard the first act of The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley. And now... What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. Taste that flavor smooth and light, the beer that leaves no afterbite. The beer that always tastes just right is Paps Blue Ribbon beer. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. Paps Blue Ribbon Beer. Finest beer served anywhere. Paps Blue Ribbon. Prove it to yourself with a three-way expert's test. One, your eyes are pleased with that Blue Ribbon clearness and sparkle. 
Two, your nose is teased with the aroma of blue ribbon hops. Three, your taste agrees. You'll hear it everywhere. Finest beer served anywhere. 33 fine brews blended into one great beer. What do you have, Paps Blue Ribbon? And now, back to the life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley with Paula Winslow and John Brown. Mrs. Riley is telling Junior the story of Riley's first date with her. And Pop really got fired? Oh, I begged my father to take him back, but your grandpa was j- Well, he just wouldn't listen. I didn't hear from Riley for quite a while. And then one day I got a beautiful bouquet of flowers. From Pop? Well, he he didn't sign the card, but I knew from the poem he wrote on it that it must be from him. I still remember how it goes. To you, my darling Peggy, I send this bunch of roses to tell you that I love you from your head down to your toeses. Oh, brother! I guess it is pretty corny. Oh, but I didn't think so then. Oh, my. I was so excited. And then when Papa came home and did what he did, I was so furious. I had just arranged the roses when... Peggy? Peggy? Here, Papa, in the living room. Oh, oh, I've had a hard day. Oh, Papa, look at the beautiful roses. Roses? You know I can't stand being around roses. They make me sneeze. Oh, it's just your imagination. It certainly is n- n- <laughs> That wasn't my imagin- Action! <clears throat> Get rid of them. No, Papa. Can't you stay in the kitchen? They're from Chester. Oh, that Riley oaf. He's not an oaf. I like him. Well, I d- Don't! <clears throat> and I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna be kept out of my own living room because of that Nika poo poo Oh, poop. <clears throat> He's just trying to get next to you so he can get back his his job. Oh, well, that's not true. He likes me, and I like him. Well, I don't, and and, uh, and I'm not going to sneeze all night on account of him. Give me those flowers. Papa, what are you doing? They're going to go out the window. Oh, no, Papa, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, young man. Just a minute now. Uh, you mean me, officer? Yes, you. What are you doing around here? Oh, nothing, officer. You've been hanging around outside this house for over an hour now. Well, I'm just waiting for a girl. She's a little late for your date, isn't she? Oh, we haven't got a date. She doesn't even know I'm here. I'm just waiting for her. (laughs) You haven't had a date. You haven't had a date, and she doesn't know you're here, but you're waiting for her, are you? Yeah, I'm uh, playing it smart, see? Uh, I sent her flowers, (laughs) and when she comes out, I'm going to ask her for a date. (laughs) That's her house up there. Hey, look, the window's opening, and maybe it's her. I hope she's seen the flowers. Yeah, she's seen them. She she just threw them out the window. (laughs) She threw them out the window. Oh, no, she couldn't. You think that means she don't like me? Son, why don't you go home? Officer, is that a gun? Shoot me, will you? (laughs) Now, now, take it easy. I don't want to go on living without her. (laughs) Go home, son. Get a good night's sleep. How how can I sleep? Boy, I'd like to tell her what I think of her. I'd tell her plenty. And I will, too. The first chance I get, I'm going to tell her off. Boy, will I tell her. If I'd say to her, I'd say... Oh, Chester! Oh. (laughs) Chester, I didn't know you were out here. Well, you got your nerve throwing my flowers out of the window. Oh, but Chester, I... A dozen beautiful roses and you threw them out of the window. But Chester, I don't... I don't even want to talk to you. Beat it. Uh, uh, Now, now, lad. That's no way to talk to a young lady. 
Oh, no? After what she done to my flowers? Officer, you don't know the trouble I went through stealing them. Some dumb... <laughs> Almost caught me and, oh, uh, oh, I take that back. I, I didn't mean that. He was a smart cop. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, no. Okay, lock me up. I don't know what that be letting you off easy. I think I've got a worse punishment for you. You stay here with your girl, kiss and make up, and get married. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Chester, I didn't throw your flowers away. You didn't? No. Papa did. He has rose fever. I came down here to get them back. I thought they were beautiful. Gee, Peggy, did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's wonderful to see you again. Well, then, then why didn't I hear from you sooner? I thought you were going to ask me for a date. Well, yeah, well, I wanted to get a job first. And I got a swell one. Huh? I can take you out of a real classy joint now. <laughs> if you'd like to go out with me, uh, maybe you don't want to. Well, uh, no hard feelings. Some other time. I'd love to go out with you. Oh, I'd love to. You, mm -hmm. you Honest? Of course. Oh, gee. I never thought I'd have a date with you. I mean, you go out with the fellas like Sidney Monaghan. He makes big dough, and he drives a huffmobile and everything. Oh, I'd rather go out with you any time. You really mean that? This is how much I mean it. Peggy! You kissed me! Ow! Oh. Peggy, this is the first time I was ever kissed. Oh, but Chester, but Chester, you're 21. Yeah, I know, and believe me, if I'd known it felt like this, I'd have done it a lot sooner. <laughs> You having a good time, Peggy? Oh, wonderful. That was the best dinner I ever had. And the floor show is something marvelous. Oh, yeah. That Bubbles Latour is some dancer, huh? Yeah, but... Oh, I hate to think what the check's gonna come to. Oh, don't worry about that. What's money? Easy come, easy go. Yeah, but this is Club Morocco. It, it's really expensive. Oh, I got more than enough. I'm working. I got a bundle on me. Look! Fifteen smackers. <laughs> you stop worrying about money. When you go out with Chester Riley, you're going out with a sport. <laughs> well, it, it's getting late, Chester, and maybe we better go. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that Sidney Monaghan over there? Where? He's coming this way. Hey, yeah. hey, Sidney! <laughs> oh, boy, is he going to be surprised to see me here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, why, hi there, Peggy. Oh, hello, Sidney. Uh, and Riley, <laughs> uh, what are you doing here? Oh, Peggy and me are doing the town. Oh, really stepping out, huh? Yep. Well, let me treat you to something good. A uh, uh, waiter. Oh, no, no, uh, let me do the buy in Sydney. Sit down a while. Well, thanks, but I I'd better get back to my table. I I'm with some friends in the other room. Well, I'll buy your friends a drink, too. Oh, waiter. Yes, sir? A drink for everybody at my friend's table on my check. Uh, oh, oh, but Riley... No, no, I, no, no, I insist. Uh, what are you drinking, Sidney? Champagne. I, oh, I, well, uh, Pap's Blue Ribbon for my friend's table. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, thanks, Riley. Don't mention it. Well, see you around. So long, Peggy. Goodbye, Sydney. So long. <laughs> oh, Chester, you didn't have to treat Sydney and his friends. Why not? Sydney ain't no, the only guy that can show off. Well, let's go, Peggy. Uh, waiter, check, please. Yeah, here you are, sir. Uh, well, let's see. Eight, ten, twelve dollars and ten cents. Here you are. Fifteen dollars. And keep the change. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, let's go, Peggy. And here's a check for the beer for the other party. Oh, well, I, I thought it was on the same... Ninety-five bottles! It's a class reunion. Nineteen dollars! 
Yes, sir. Same as at your grocer. And your grocer doesn't have Bubba's Latour. Yeah, well, well, we ain't going yet. Uh, bring us some coffee. Yes, sir. Coffee. Yeah, and uh, put an aspirin in it, too, will you? Oh. oh, Chester, you don't have enough money. Well, uh, don't worry about money. When you're out with Chester Riley, you're out with a sport. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, I gotta phone my mother. Yeah, but Mrs. Wilson, I gotta talk to my mother. It's very important. Where did she go? To the movies? But I gotta get in touch with her. Listen, will you please go to the movies and find her and tell her to come right down to Club Morocco? Yeah, Club Morocco. And, and bring $19 with her. Yeah, and 60 cents. Thanks. Oh, if I don't get that dough, I'll be carried out of here feet first. In that case, we'll need help. Oh, Digger, it's you. Yes, it is I indeed. Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Digger, I'm glad to see you. You're a lifesaver. That's the first time I've been called that. I'm short $19 for my check. Oh my, you're in a tight spot, Riley. This club is run by some of the toughest gangsters in town. If you don't pay up, they'll give me the business. <laughs> You mean, they'll give me the business? When they give you the business, they give me the business. <laughs> Digger, can you lend me the dough? I'm awfully sorry. I haven't that much on me. Well, couldn't you dig up something for me? They wouldn't accept what I dig up. They want money. <laughs> well, I, I guess uh, I'll have to wait for my mother to get down here. You'd better hurry. If you're here after ten, they slap a two-dollar cover charge on. Two dollars? They got a nerve. In my business, the cover charge is much higher. <laughs> Suppose my mother doesn't come. I gotta get out of here. There are only two ways you'll get out of here. One is to sneak out the back. Yeah, uh, what's the other way? Let's not talk shop. <laughs> You'd better sneak out. How? I know a way. Through that door to your left, and then... Uh, wait, I'll draw you a diagram. Oh, thanks, Digger. I I if I make it, I'll uh, meet you outside and give you a lift home. If you don't make it, I'll give you a lift home. <laughs> well, here's the diagram, and now you'd better be shoveling off. <laughs> Okay, Peggy, you ready? Let's go. But Chester, the check is... No, well, uh, don't worry. Uh, uh, the, 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 don't worry about that now. It's all fixed. Uh, let's get out of here. <sighs> no, no, not, not that way, Chester. Go to the right. Well, this way is shorter. Come on, Peggy, hurry up. Now, through this door here. <clears throat> hey, now, uh, uh, come on. But Chester, are you sure this is the way out? Yeah, sure. Uh, come on, through this door. <sighs> Uh, well, uh, quick, right through here. Oh, yes, sir. We're going the wrong way. This is where they wash the dishes. Uh, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Uh, in here, quick. Oh, this is the furnace room. Yeah, we're on the right track. Uh, now, up these stairs here. Hurry up, Peg. But, Chester... I'll explain later. Uh, now, through this door and up this ladder. Uh, I'll go first. You follow me. Oh, oh, Chester, it's so dark, I can't see. Well, hold on to me. Uh, uh, we're almost at the uh, top. Uh, there, now, uh, th th where's the trap door? Oh, here it is, I see it. Uh, there, now, I'll go first and I'll pull you up. Uh, give me your hand now. All right. Uh, Upsy-daisy. <laughs> there we are. Uh, Why? Now we're up on the roof. We are up on the roof. Hey, no, don't, don't worry. Hey, we can get down. There's a fire escape on the next building. Yeah. Here, uh, step out on this ledge. Well, how are we going to get across? It's so wide. Oh, it's only three feet. We'll jump. Oh. 
Oh, oh, Chester. Oh, don't be scared. It's a uh, cinch. Come on. Oh. Uh, and a girl now. Now uh, down the fire escape. Hurry. Uh, oh, but, it, but it doesn't go all the way down. No, uh, we'll have to drop down. Hang on to the last rung and let yourself go. It's only 12 feet. Oh. Uh, I can catch you. I'll go first. Oh, Chester. Okay, okay, Pat. Uh, let's go. Don't be scared. Oh. There. Uh. <laughs> we made it. Well, that was easy, huh? Why did we have to go through all this? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I didn't have him enough money to pay the check. Oh, but Chester, while you were gone, I paid the check. Huh? Oh, I realized you didn't have any money, and, and I, I had no, no, I mean, uh, nothing doing. I don't take money from a girl. Uh, let's go back. Come on. Oh, now, don't be silly, Chester. You'll pay me back. Yeah? How? All that money, uh, it'll take me years and years. And, uh, mm -hmm. Peggy, mm -hmm. will you marry me? <sighs> you better. It's the only way to get even. <laughs> The Rileys will be back in just a moment. But right now, let's talk turkey. Thanksgiving Day turkey. Yes, the big tender roast turkey you're going to slice into at dinner next Thursday, along with those candied yams, those fresh peas and limas, dressing and gravy. All topped off with a cool, foaming glass of sparkling clear Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Brother, that's what I call a blue ribbon combination. Fine food and the finest beer served anywhere. Yes, this Thursday, people all over America will be celebrating Thanksgiving, just as every day, people the world over enjoy internationally famous Pabst Blue Ribbon. It's the beer the whole world knows about. So when you're out shopping for your Thanksgiving dinner and the man says, what do you have? Well, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Don't settle for anything but the best. Tell them you want the world's number one favorite. The finest beer served anywhere. So you see, Junior, you're not the only boy who's scared on his first date. And if your father lived through it, you will too. Now you go call for Linda. Oh, okay, Mom. Good night. Mm. Good night, dear. Well, uh, where are you going, son? To the dance. Oh, you changed your mind. Well, now you're showing some sense. Oh, I envy you, son. There's nothing like your first big date. What a thrill. I remember the first time I took your mother out. Uh, Mom told me. Peg, you told him? Yes, dear. I mean, the truth? Of course. Now, you promised you'd never breathe a word of what happened that night. Oh, don't be silly, Riley. Well, okay, you broke your promise. Just for that, you'll have to wait for that $19 I owe you. <laughs> Peg, you know something? You still inspire me to write poetry to you just the way you did on our first date. Ah, oh, you got another poem for me after all these years? How sweet. <laughs> yeah, listen. <clears throat> Next Thursday is Thanksgiving Day, and I give thanks for you, for all the food you bring my way, and the Paps Blue Ribbon, too. You really cause my heart to sing, just like the happy birds, and through the years I'll always cling to love's three little words. Oh, Riley, three little words? Yep. You mean, I love you? Nah, I mean, what'll you have? And I also mean, Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> what'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. What'll you have? 
Babs Blue Ribbon. Smoother, smoother, smoother flavor. Zest and sparkle, millions favor. Taste that smoother, smoother flavor. Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. What do you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. Paps Blue Ribbon invites you to join us again next week to hear The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley. Scripted by Reuben Shipp and Alan Lipscott. Directed by Mitch Simmons. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Digger O'Dell is John Brown. Junior is Bobby Ellis. Riley's mother is Jane Morgan. Riley's father-in-law is Alan Reed. Sydney Monahan is Lou Merrill. And the waiter is Herb Vigran. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker. Life of Riley is brought to you by the Paps Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And sent your way with the best wishes of Paps Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. See you next week. Jimmy Wallington speaking. That's our show this time. If you enjoyed it, tell us. Write to project.audion at gmail.com. And like us or share the video link with your friends. Until next time, thanks for listening. Oh, don't be <laughs> silly, Chester. You'll pay me back. Yeah? Well, how? All that money? It'll take me years. And years. And years. Years and years. And, and years. More years. And years. <laughs> and years. <laughs> hey, Peggy? Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> will you... Will you... <laughs> Boing! Will you... <laughs> Will you marry me? Will you marry me, Peg? <laughs>